Welcome everybody to my introductory lecture to artificial intelligence and machine learning methods. As you can see, I have added uh, for material science uh, as a specification for this lecture, uh, because even though I will not do uh, essentially specific examples uh, in material science or in, in any other field, um, I will definitely have in mind uh, material science when talking about the uh, important issue of uh, representation of input data for the learning uh, uh, algorithms, uh, therefore uh, the specification in material science. Now uh, I will start, uh, indeed very general, uh, by trying and defining uh, in a kind of useful way uh, the concept of artificial intelligence. Now, uh, if you browse uh, uh, literature, um, it tends to, to have a, a kind of circular uh, definitions and sometimes provocative definitions like uh, artificial intelligence is what we do not yet have, hinting at the fact that uh, it, it's, it's some process in which uh, whatever we discover we realize that this is not yet intelligence, but we discover that only when we have a new step ahead and so forth. However, uh, there is uh, probably a, a good way to, to frame the problem, if not uh, really uh, constraining it, defining it. Um, first of all, it's uh, important to uh, notice that uh, we have a, a, a narrow artificial intelligence uh, as opposed to uh, general artificial intelligence. This course is essentially, or is totally devoted to the so-called narrow artificial intelligence. It is no, by no means narrow in scope. It's narrow in, 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 in one specific sense. Let me show. So we can define narrow artificial intelligence as the theory and development of computer systems, uh, where systems is a bit general. It's, it's both the hardware and the software, so the algorithm, but also the specific architecture, uh, even though I will not discuss that here, that perform tasks uh, normally associated to the human intelligence. Now it's still, still a bit vague because what is human intelligence? But let's try to define these tasks. So perceiving, classifying, learning, abstracting, reasoning, and or acting. I have put in italic those things that are a bit more uh, uh, relevant, let's say, for, for, for physics in general, material science, um, uh, while perceiving and acting are a little bit more related to some other kind of artificial intelligence or robots, or self-driving car and so on. Uh, but you can stretch this uh, actually perceiving as kind of uh, acquiring uh, data, acting is uh, reacting to some new data and, and these kind of things. And this is uh, what we are interested in, I would say, here. Uh, opposed to this, we have the general artificial intelligence. This is a very, very short definition, full autonomy, hinting at the fact that the general artificial intelligence is some kind of system uh, that is uh, uh, performing all human-like uh, 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 activities. Um, and in some sense, it, it is, it will uh, uh, essentially outperform humans because there is no reason why uh, such general artificial intelligence uh, could be uh, limited uh, to, to, to human uh, kind of uh, performance. Um, I don't really uh, like to, to, to speak about this uh, in, in this lecture, even though I'm certainly quite interested to the, to, to, to the open discussion. I am just pointing you uh, at this uh, uh, extraordinary, uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, podcast uh, interview uh, of Lech Friedman uh, um, that interviewed uh, Ben Gersel, and here you have the link. If the name Ben Gersel doesn't say anything to you, well, definitely, then you should go there, because uh, uh, that, that's a kind of very inspiring um, thing to listen to. Um, next, uh, I will proceed with uh, with the trying uh, uh, different ways to um, classify, make some taxonomy of um, uh, artificial intelligence uh, kind of uh, subfields. Uh, and I uh, immediately have a warning that uh, um, some things are diff difficult to, to, to classify specifically. Nonetheless, the attempt of classifying and making a taxonomy 
is, uh, is, is worth because it uh, helps uh, uh, having a kind of uh, compass and, and orient uh, ourselves uh, in this uh, very intricate uh, uh, field and, and forest of salt fields. Um, so uh, the idea is that uh, yes, uh, the, the, the platypus uh, is a little bit of a hard uh, uh, organism to classify and we, sh we should uh, have in, uh, it in mind when, when doing the rest of the taxonomy. Okay, so a very minimal history of the field with essentially no uh, dates. Uh, but more the idea that uh, we classify under the name uh, artificial intelligence uh, three waves. I took uh, the, the, this classification uh, by in uh, this uh, talk of the director of uh, I2O, DARPA. Um, uh, he speaks uh, of uh, uh, three waves. And what I found interesting in that talk was uh, this kind of uh, uh, ranking or, or, or rating tabs. Uh, to, to, to specify what the different uh, waves uh, uh, achieved or aim to achieve, as you will see. So we have the past uh, defined as handcraft uh, reasoning. We would hardly uh, um, recognize uh, this as artificial intelligence today, but yet it was the beginning of, uh, of the field from, the, say, the 50s, the 60s. Um, and uh, so these, these things have to be uh, read at the... Uh, whatever, teal, turquoise, uh, uh, bar is, is the, what this has been achieved. So these this, uh, systems would be able to perceive, to reason, but not to learn and abstract. And, and these were uh, systems in which the, the humans would kind of code all uh, possible situations that the system would, uh, could, uh, could find and tell a set of minimal rules uh, or, or more complex rules to, to, to follow in each situation. So the reasoning was a kind of if-then uh, rule base that was were completely uh, 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 planned and implemented by, by, by the programmer. Um, yeah, this is the only uh, kind of uh, historical uh, so plot with, with, with dates uh, actually you may have heard about the winters uh, of artificial intelligence in the uh, early 80s uh, and then again uh, in, the, in the late uh, 80s or early 90s um, that are all in, in this kind of uh, uh, first uh, uh, first wave uh, uh, according to this classification even though certainly this wave had already a lot of uh, uh, somewhat modern artificial intelligence, uh, especially uh, neural networks, um, it was dominated by these uh, expert systems. And the, the winters, uh, the famous uh, or famous winters were determined by um, uh, here, the first one was, was kind of uh, technical conceptual. So, um, uh, there were uh, uh, studies that, that, that showed that uh, current uh, algorithms uh, at that time would not be ever able to map some, some uh, uh, high-level kind of uh, uh, functions um, and, uh, and, and therefore uh, there was a kind of uh, collapse uh, of, of the interest into, into the artificial intelligence. The second one was kind of purely uh, economical in the sense that uh, a lot of companies uh, were born uh, on, the, on the kind of ashes of the, of the first winter uh, and, and kind of oversold themselves and so when they <laughs> collectively didn't deliver much uh, to, the, to the industry, uh, kind of the funding stopped. And so this is, was a bit more uh, of economical bubble thing. And then since then, things are, are, are increasing. Uh, but on, I mean, on the long run, uh, one would say that n nothing bad really happened. There is a, a kind of a steady growth of, uh, of the interest in artificial intelligence. Let me move to the, to the second wave. The second wave is the, uh, the present. Uh, or, or uh, essentially the statistical learning that is uh, the, the topic to which uh, we'll devote uh, essentially the whole lecture. And now here you have uh, um, perceiving uh, and, and learning uh, much, uh, so uh, from zero to, to, to quite some. 
Uh, and essentially, so the reasoning uh, went back and, and a little bit of abstracting, but, 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 but not much. So the, 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 the criticism here is essentially on the reasoning, the fact that the, the machine doesn't understand uh, what, uh, what is uh, happening. Um, but uh, uh, it certainly it, it, it is learning, so that's uh, uh, kind of uh, also maybe uh, counterintuitive uh, what is happening. Uh, and the future, you may imagine, the idea is to boost uh, these these two aspects here. Uh, in it has a name, the future is called contextual adaptation. So the fact of really. Uh, understand uh, the, the environment in some sense. It has already a name, a promising name for the, the discipline. It's called Neural Symbolic Learning and Reasoning. Uh, it's a kind of, uh, in some sense, the fusion of the two past waves. In the sense, we have uh, the best uh, in terms of uh, flexibility of statistical learning and, uh, and uh, uh, putting back some of the symbolic reasoning that, that was the um, a workhorse of the first uh, wave, but this is, uh, let's say, the future. We will see what, what will then happen. Uh, and let me go back to uh, other kind of uh, classifications. So uh, uh, another attempt to uh, kind of uh, divide the, 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 the field in, in some useful aspects uh, is this of uh, uh, defining uh, confirmatory uh, analysis. It is essentially what m most of us uh, uh, already have uh, heard about uh, in, in, uh, in artificial intelligence and uh, most likely are familiar with. So, so some uh, tools for, uh, for making predictions uh, about uh, uh, learning, from, uh, from learning from data in terms of making prediction on what will happen uh, with new data. So, uh, this can be uh, defined in this way, confirmatory analysis uh, uh, or predictive induction. Um, the counterpart would be exploratory analysis, uh, kind of Cinderella uh, in some sense uh, in, the, in the field. Uh, another um, maybe hard to digest name is descriptive induction. So it is still induction, something that builds from the data. Um, um, in order to uh, infer some, uh, some uh, uh, rules and, and regularities. But it is not predictive, it's descriptive. So it finds uh, uh, regularities, but it doesn't try to predict what uh, comes next with, new, with new, new data, not explicitly, at least. And the, the term exploratory analysis was introduced by uh, this guy, John uh, Taki. And, um, and uh, I have this quote that I find interesting. So uh, the exploratory analysis could, could, could have this uh, kind of motto, finding the question is often more important than finding the answer. Probably not 100% true, but, but certainly sometimes it's the hardest thing is, is finding the, uh, the question. And, and, and uh, exploratory analysis uh, aims at, at suggesting the questions in, in some way. So one looks at the data, has some tools to look uh, at, at the data, uh, enhancing a kind of human ability to, to really look at some tables of plots. And, uh, and uh, uh, questions may arise from this new insight uh, that is provided by the uh, exploratory analysis. And then one may try to do predictive induction, induction in the sense that then one has a specific question and, and test uh, if some model to, to give the answer is, uh, is uh, good enough. So in the uh, two classes, uh, uh, one could put uh, on the um, confirmatory part, uh, very familiar regression and classification. I will actually talk uh, extensively about regression and classification. Um, and here uh, names that uh, probably most of you uh, have heard already, uh, clustering or cluster analysis and dimension reduction. A name probably is not so known to you, subgroup discovery, unless uh, because uh, Matthias Scheffler has mentioned it already in the, in the first lecture. Uh, that is a kind of uh, advanced uh, level uh, of uh, descriptive induction. Uh, it will be introduced uh, extensively in, uh, in a dedicated lecture in, in, in January, I think. So, now 
let's um, uh, try to uh, make some more uh, possibly uh, hopefully insightful um, classification so clearly a subset of uh, artificial intelligence is what we call uh, uh, machine learning or uh, actually would prefer statistical learning but for some reason machine learning has become more uh, used uh, nowadays uh, but the idea is that, that there is a statistical theory of learning uh, uh, behind uh, all, uh, all this um, where well, learning uh, as the uh, uh, kind of uh, prescription that uh, uh, algorithms uh, under this class uh, improve with more data. So there is no way uh, the algorithm does not improve uh, by seeing more data. And the key word here is, uh, is regularized regression. I will actually introduce uh, in, uh, at some point uh, later. Um, and uh, there are three main uh, uh, categories in, uh, in machine learning um, uh, that are uh, supervised, unsupervised, and uh, a bit more recent, the reinforcement learning. Um, again, so supervised is uh, a little bit uh, related to the um, um, uh, previous uh, classification that I made. So, uh, to this uh, predictive induction and the unsupervised related to the exploratory analysis of descriptive induction, but they are not exactly overlapping. For example, subgroup discovery is in this class, but it's not unsupervised. Um, so it's useful to have this other uh, kind of classification. And now you may understand why I have uh, <laughs> put the platypus at the beginning. Um, so supervised uh, uh, uses data that have, have some some labels so they uh, they, they, they have uh, some some target property that one uh, would like to predict and and uh, and so uh, this is what it is used uh, for training uh, the machine learning uh, uh, algorithms and, and this is what the machine learning are trying to predict the labels that are some property and uh, the unsupervised learning, I put, uh, it aims at finding structure. So in the sense that it doesn't have uh, uh, labels or doesn't use uh, labels in the data. And, uh, and the aim is to find if there is some kind of hidden structure in the, in the data uh, themselves, in the way they are uh, uh, represented. The um, uh, reinforcement learning, uh, for the moment I will just put this uh, kind of uh, cryptic uh, uh, definition is about obtaining rewards. I will very briefly actually uh, talk about reinforcement learning uh, later. Um, at some point, uh, uh, some people uh, realize that one can have uh, a whole uh, interesting subclass uh, of algorithms in machine learning that is uh, I'll go under the, the umbrella name of representation learning. So th that means that there are algorithms outside here that do not learn the representation. So there is a 100% human intervention on designing the representation. That is, at, at this point, the input to the, to the, to the machine learning. I will uh, kind of be more explicit in, uh, in a few slides on what is the representation. Uh, but there are algorithms that learn a representation. So they start from some hints, but they build the representation as a part of the learning process itself. And inside this class, uh, notably, there is a celebrated deep learning and, and the field uh, symbolic regression that uh, went up and down in the, in the, in the history of uh, machine learning. Um, and recently kind of uh, had a new uh, boost. Uh, and I will talk about this actually in a dedicated lecture. So not only so symbolic regression, but the main next lecture will be about symbolic regression and compressed sensing. Um, that is uh, um, uh, a kind of uh, approach that is uh, yet another um, um, direction in which you could uh, classify things in, in, uh, in artificial intelligence. Um, so, 
uh, here I put a summary of, of a future lecture to show that uh, uh, today I will not uh, present explicitly any uh, algorithm. I will rather talk about uh, a general concept uh, and, and uh, somewhat recommendation uh, for this, uh, for this uh, regarding these algorithms. So you see that uh, we will have uh, sub supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and also a little bit of reinforcement uh, learning uh, uh, later in January. I added here another class that many people uh, regard as part of machine learning, that is genetic algorithms. I will actually talk about that in the next lecture because symbolic regression is often associated also to genetic algorithms. So I will definitely uh, talk about genetic algorithms and explain why they are considered and they can be uh, legitimately considered uh, as machine learning, in which sense uh, this, machine, this uh, genetic algorithm learns something. Um, in the supervised, we, we will have uh, uh, subclasses that I will actually uh, go into a little bit uh, now in, in, in this lecture in, in, in explaining what, what these uh, uh, terms actually mean. But, but then uh, uh, Santiago, uh, in, in a lecture about uh, regression, we talk about, uh, uh, extensively about these uh, techniques for regression and also a classification, a famous classification technique uh, that goes under the name of support vector machine. Um, there are techniques that can be used both for regression and classification um, that uh, I will introduce uh, uh, here in, in the next lecture actually and then Daniel will talk about uh, classification trees and random forest. Uh, Angelo uh, Ziletti will introduce uh, neural networks for classification and, classific and, uh, and regression and, but he will also talk about uh, uh, neural networks for unsupervised learning that go, uh, so the typical architecture uh, goes under the name of variational autoencoder uh, and also a little bit uh, about reinforcement learning because it's actually implemented by means of some uh, uh, deep neural networks or at least as part of the algorithm. Um, and Matthias uh, Schaffler will uh, uh, talk about subgroup discovery that is uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, um, new uh, and, and technique that is uh, not uh, uh, a regression or classification uh, in, in, in any sense, but it's supervised. So very interesting technique to you. Uh, finding structure in, in the data, in particular uh, exceptional uh, subset of data. Okay, so uh, before I go uh, a little bit more into uh, the uh, constituents of a machine learning uh, kind of uh, project or, or, or endeavor, um, I wanted to comment a little bit uh, uh, on the uh, idea of uh, data-driven science in the sense that uh, for sure uh, uh, artificial intelligence machine learning is the, the mean, the, 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 the toolkit that we use to um, uh, actually actuate the data-driven uh, science. Um, that is, uh, as uh, Matthias has presented in the last lecture, the so-called uh, fourth paradigm in, uh, in, uh, in science. Uh, what I wanted to say uh, here as a comment is that uh, uh, science uh, uh, is by definition data-driven, right? So the novelty of the data-driven is more on the automatic tools that are used for, for doing uh, uh, science. And here I would like to, to introduce a couple of examples uh, that are certainly known to, 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 to all of you, but just to um, kind of frame a little bit uh, the, uh, the big picture uh, of, um, about what we may want to uh, expect from a good machine learning algorithm that are used for science and specifically for, for material science. So imagine that uh, at some point uh, you have uh, from uh, some, some, some catalog uh, uh, the uh, very accurate observation of, um, of uh, uh, the motion of planets in the solar system or maybe a little bit more uh, 
abstract uh, example, you, by numerically integrating general relativity equations, you have positions of, of, of planets in the solar system given some initial conditions. And then uh, uh, you look at the data for some time, and you happen to to be called uh, Johannes Kepler, <laughs> and you find that uh, the, the, there is uh, some simple way to describe uh, all this uh, complex data. That is, uh, if you realize that there are orbits, so the planets are. are going uh, along these orbits uh, uh, around the Sun um, and, and one plots uh, the square of the orbital period on one axis and the cube of the semi major axis on the other axis um, all the planets uh, uh, fall on one line so there is a, a linear relationship between these, uh, these two quantities now actually um, Kepler had the uh, data up to uh, Saturn, Uranus was discovered uh, a bit after uh, and so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, data points, straight line, one has a low. That's, that's uh, remarkable, right? I mean, first of all, this is a remarkably good uh, straight line. Um, and the other thing is that uh, with only six data points, uh, 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 one had the idea uh, could, 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 could be kind of confident that this was a, a strong finding. The finding became uh, uh, even more strong when, uh, when uh, Isaac Newton, uh, uh, a few decades later, uh, found uh, a unifying uh, kind of uh, a framework, a theory, that explained why planets would go in some elliptical orbits and, and this law is, uh, is actually uh, comes out of a very simple law for the interaction between the planets and, uh, and the Sun. Um, another example of, uh, of uh, purely uh, data-driven science is the periodic table of elements, right? So Mendeleev came up with the idea of the periodic table of elements um, just, well, just by collecting data, first of all, and having the structure genius to collect them uh, by uh, uh, using uh, as a, uh, a description of this uh, of this data uh, the stoichiometry of the reaction with oxygen and hydrogen in the in the columns here, and then arranging them in uh, in, in families, uh, and and just by listing them uh, in by increasing uh, atomic weight. Of course, at the time they didn't know anything about atomic number, and uh, and then he came up with this table that if you study it for a, for a second, you will see that is uh, amazingly close to the to the modern uh, periodic table. Uh, but the most striking uh, aspect is that um, uh, Mendeleev made predictions. So there were some empty spots, for example, these ones, and he said, okay, between zinc and arsenic, there are some other unknown elements. Uh, that later were discovered, gallium and germanium, he would predict uh, more or less the, the atomic weights, but in particular how they would react. So he said, he thought and hypothesized that uh, nature would have filled the, the gap, and it did. It did. So uh, these examples uh, are, are, are here put uh, uh, in order to um, remind you that uh, mm, learning uh, some regularities from the data uh, is uh, a, a kind of noble uh, <laughs> activity in, uh, in science and, and, and then this could lead to uh, future uh, breakthrough laws that, uh, that uh, are, um, kind of find uh, simpler and better regularities in, uh, in, uh, in, in the data but the, the kind of uh, uh, unbiased uh, learning that one does uh, on, on the data themselves uh, uh, can bring uh, a lot of insight and also prediction, as you see here. Um, still about a little bit the history of, uh, of the field um, and this insightful uh, talk uh, from, uh, from MIT, uh, the lecturer um, kind of realize that uh, uh, it is more data than algorithms that lead to breakthrough in, uh, in, in artificial intelligence. 
So this is a list of uh, important breakthrough that most of, uh, of you have heard about. So Deep Blue defeating uh, Kasparov, uh, IBM Watson uh, winning Geopardy, and, and then uh, the Deep Mind uh, here for the Atari games and, and so on. And, and if you look, the algorithms uh, are, are quite old with respect to the date of this uh, application breakthrough. Uh, what, what changed uh, soon before this breakthrough is the availability of data. Uh, so um, in, in, in some provocative way, uh, uh, th there are a lot of algorithms uh, out there probably that are waiting to, to become useful when there are uh, good data to, to be used uh, for. So the next breakthrough could be uh, systematic discovery of new materials, let's say. Um, so now let me go um, deeper into uh, the actual machinery. And uh, I have uh, put here a very minimal and, and logical flowchart. Of, uh, of statistical learning that I will spend the rest of uh, the lecture on essentially by, by digging into the, the single aspects. Okay, first of all, one uh, uh, needs uh, data, annotated data I put here. So uh, I will not talk very much about data uh, or essentially I, I will just say a few words now and then uh, do not come back to this point. But uh, you have to realize uh, that um, um, so uh, data in the, in the proper format to be used for learning uh, are not found uh, like in the wild. So one has to uh, kind of uh, gather the data and, and, and be sure that they are consistent in some way. So I will not um, um, talk about this too much because uh, essentially the two lectures by, by Claudia Traxel, the one that she just gave last week and the one coming uh, later in, uh, uh, during the, the course are, are fully devoted to uh, the storage and the uh, stewardship of data so that they, they can be used for, uh, for uh, artificial intelligence. So she mentioned about uh, the FAIR data and uh, in particular the, the reusability, the R, uh, and the, um, uh, the I, the interoperability of the data is uh, basic uh, for uh, their use in, uh, in, uh, in artificial intelligence. I mean, not only for artificial intelligence, one needs fair data, but certainly artificial intelligence uh, benefits uh, uh, and will benefit in future by properly annotated data. The next uh, topic, uh, actually, this will uh, I will spend quite some time is uh, is uh, features and uh, and, uh, and descriptors representation. So, some words that have been used a lot uh, and uh, and not uh, always consistently. Now, I will propose my own uh, uh, view of this that is actually based on uh, on some publications, some from me and. Uh, Matthias and other co-authors and, and some from um, other uh, people actually in the, in the NOMAD uh, Novel Material Discovery Center of Excellence. Um, and I think this is a very important uh, uh, discussion on, on in order to understand each other what we mean by, by these kind of uh, terms. Um, and then I will um, uh, have a kind of uh, bird's eye view on, on training uh, uh, algorithms uh, and I will uh, talk about uh, parameters that are trained and hyperparameters, what they are and how they are trained, what are uh, the metrics that one can use for training depending on, on which kind of uh, um, uh, purpose one has. And, and then uh, the uh, related issue uh, of model selection that is strictly related to training or closely related to training but it's not the same team and, uh, thing and it has another kind of uh, device that is called the cross validation in order to be assessed and I will kind of uh, dig a little bit into this in order to give a kind of general framework in which uh, uh, also the next lecture uh, will move uh, so that uh, uh, you, uh, listener, uh, have already uh, kind of uh, uh, a picture 
or what uh, is going to happen. Um, and then uh, uh, the, the, the separated issue would be the test. So when the algorithm uh, has been trained and, and the proper model or set of models have been selected, then one does a test uh, and see if the algorithm uh, uh, works or not. And then here there is a kind of Chinese wall. Uh, uh, here one does uh, whatever they like to come up with something and then the algorithm is tested on, on real data. Essentially, we will not say more about tests in, in this lecture because I will not show any, any actual application. Uh, you will see plenty in the next lectures and in particular towards the, 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 the end of the course in which we will have uh, practical uh, cases. Uh, and also in the hands-on session, you will see a little bit uh, uh, in practice uh, uh, what is, is meant by, by testing uh, a machine learning algorithm as opposed to train them and select them. Okay, um, now one more uh, attempt of classification uh, when we go to, to training uh, algorithms, uh, one uh, uh, um, criterion uh, that is used to uh, to, to, to choose the algorithm is also related to what kind of um, uh, variable we have uh, in the input uh, and we have uh, in, the, in, the, in the output. So that means uh, what we are trying to predict. Um, and uh, here uh, we have uh, uh, one kind of classification that is uh, 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 on one side quantitative uh, kind of uh, uh, variables that in terms are uh, can be uh, distinguished in discrete and continuous um, and in particular the continuous uh, you, you could have uh, scalars uh, but also vectors uh, and tensors uh, or just arrays and matrices uh, uh, depending on which invariant property they have um, and, and this quantitative uh, variable uh, typically are treated by the so-called regression. So if one wants to predict uh, a discrete or a continuous value, uh, one uh, uses, uh, one looks at the regression kind of algorithms. Uh, the other class of algorithm, uh, oh, sorry, of, um, of variables are the so-called categorical variables, uh, also called qualitative. And typically are uh, class labels like uh, is something uh, a metal or not a metal or going uh, outside uh, uh, material science uh, is, is something as a certain color or a certain taste uh, or, or something like that. Uh, a, a, a subclass of this categorical variable are the binary ones so where one is just uh, yes or no kind of uh, thing. Um, Again, for maybe the metal non metal is, is one uh, nice example, um, even though uh, not, not this clearly defined, probably. Um, but um, um, one typically has a metal or a non metal, uh, depending on temperature, actually. Um, a bit more insightful uh, uh, classification of, uh, of variable has been done uh, in, in actually uh, in 46 uh, by uh, this guy Stevens in, uh, in this paper. Um, and uh, he um, came up with this uh, uh, proposal that uh, uh, there are uh, purely nominal uh, um, uh, variable. So uh, there are labels for categories and the order you, uh, you put them uh, in uh, has, has no meaning. So one, one can uh, has, have uh, a, a different uh, uh, classes uh, uh, for, for, for identifying uh, certain, uh, certain uh, um, uh, yeah, materials or, or, or something that is not a material and it doesn't matter in which order these, these classes are, are listed. Um, this is a pure classification problem. Uh, another possibility is uh, ordinal kind of uh, uh, variables that are still categories but uh, uh, they, they are ranked in the sense that there is something that is uh, uh, say low, medium and, and high 
uh, um, so there is no specific uh, um, meaning in the distance that there is uh, between the different uh, uh, classes, uh, but uh, uh, the the order of uh, of the classes as uh, as a meaning. So in your learning algorithm, it could make sense to give a meaning to the fact that a certain class come uh, before uh, the other class. And then we have uh, uh, interval type of uh, variables um, in which uh, one typically has a continuous uh, range of, uh, of possible values. Um, and also the, uh, it could be also discrete actually, what is important is that uh, the, the, the intervals uh, between the different values that the variable can have uh, have a meaning. Um, so like a temperature is the obvious thing that comes uh, to mind. Uh, uh, the, uh, there is a, a, a meaning in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the range of temperatures that, uh, that, that one gives. But to some extent, the, 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 the zero is arbitrary actually probably not the best example because uh, there is an absolute zero in temperature. Um, well, so let's say the energy uh, is it's the best example probably. So uh, the, the difference in energies have a meaning, but the, uh, the, if one neglects uh, uh, relativity, uh, there is no uh, uh, well-defined uh, zero for, uh, for energy. So it's, uh, it is arbitrary. Uh, the next uh, uh, example, uh, the next class that is very important to distinguish from the interval kind of type is the so-called ratio. Uh, maybe not the most explicative name, but the important thing in, in the ratio kind of variable is that uh, the, the zero has a specific meanings, that, that there is no such thing. So uh, if there is, a, uh, well, temperature would, would, would work, um, so zero temperature means that essentially that there is no temperature, uh, so that, that, uh, that one is falling at, at the limit of, of, of the scale, um, or uh, the typical example that one finds in, uh, in, uh, in books is, uh, is, the, is the height, uh, height sorry, of, of, of people. Uh, uh, let's say uh, if one puts zero in the height, it means that essentially this is uh, not known. So this is a kind of variable that can be used uh, uh, in order to give, uh, in, in the zero can be used to, s to say that, that this is not uh, uh, available. And the last uh, type uh, is the cardinal uh, kind of variable that is uh, uh, can the, the answer to, to the question how many, let's say. So, it's, uh, so when, when one counts kind of objects that uh, one would like to predict. And, um, and here one can use uh, classification regression, while the, 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 the two previous cases are specifically for, uh, for regression. Okay, so uh, here is uh, actually uh, a good moment uh, to, to stop for uh, the uh, brief interval and to get uh, the first question. Then uh, the second part of uh, uh, the lecture will be uh, uh, about uh, uh, now the definition of feature descriptors, uh, specifically uh, having in mind material science and going to uh, regression uh, uh, more deeply and to some extent classification algorithms and uh, also let's say uh, um, I will pay a lot of attention on the uh, the matrix that one used for, for the training and for the evaluation of the, of the train model and the selection of the, of the models. Okay, so um, see you uh, live in a uh, in, uh, in few seconds. Um, thank you for your attention uh, so far.